Ahmed Mohamed Kathrada, one of the giants of the liberation struggle. He stood shoulder to shoulder with Nelson Mandela and was his confidant during their long years of imprisonment. Our relation with Kathy has been part of war and peace. He concentrated on the war aspect and I concentrated on the peace. Affectionately known by his comrades as Kathy, he was born on the 21st of August 1929 in Schweizer in the Northwest Province. He was introduced to politics as a child and at the age of 17 participated in the passive resistance campaign of the South African Indian Congress. He was among 2,000 people who were arrested and imprisoned for defying a law that discriminated against South Africans of Indian descent. But it was the 1940s when Kathrada truly cut his political teeth, after meeting Walter Sisulu and Mandela at Wits University. I know him for 67 years, when I was still at school and he was at university. Met him in 1946. And the abiding memory is here, is a university student, because there are so few. Uh, and my senior in age, able to relate to me as an equal. It was the start of an iconic friendship, forged against the chaotic backdrop of the struggle for freedom. In trouble with apartheid authorities from then on, Kathrada was placed under restrictions by the security police. He was arrested several times for breaking banning orders and organizing the defiance campaign. In 1956, he was among 156 ANC activists charged with high treason. Kathrada, Mandela and Sisulu were among the last 30 to be acquitted in 1960. In 1962, Kathrada was placed under house arrest but went underground to continue his political work. But in July the following year, he was arrested at Lily's Leaf Farm along with eight others and charged with treason again. Africans want to be paid a living wage. After the historic Ravonia trial, Kathrada, along with Mandela, Sisulu, Govan Mbeki, Raymond Mshlaba, Dennis Goldberg, Elias Motswaledi, and Andrew Mlangeni were sentenced to life imprisonment on Robben Island. During his 26 years and three months in prison, Kathrada obtained four university degrees. After his release on the 15th of October 1989, the ANC was unbanned and Kathrada joined the final push for freedom. In 1991, at the ANC's first legal conference in South Africa, Kathrada was elected onto its National Executive Committee. It was also around that time that he met Barbara Hogan. The two struck up a romance and remained life partners until Kathrada's death. In 1994, Kathrada was elected to Parliament and served as President Mandela's parliamentary councillor. Although Kathrada declined nomination to the NEC at the ANC's next conference in 1997, effectively ending his political career, he continued fighting for a non-racial and just South Africa and was revered universally as a calm voice of reason. Thank you very much. As Showered with accolades and honorary doctorates, Kathrada also received the Isitwalandwe the highest award bestowed by the ANC. But Uncle Kathy was not shy about encouraging all political leaders to work together. The common enemy at the moment is poverty, hunger, unemployment, disease, education. And I would wish and pray that uh, the organizations would be able to unite on these common issues instead of wasting their energies and resources fighting one another. The Ahmed Kathrada Foundation was formed in 2008 and chiefly concerned itself with deepening non-racialism. We have to live 
the same country, with the same people, with a message of forgiveness, with a message of looking forward, reconciliation, and going forward with stronger and stronger United South Africa. When Nelson Mandela died in 2013, Kathrada's emotion mirrored the nation's grief. Farewell, my dear brother, my mentor, my leader. When Walter died, I lost a father. And now, I have lost a brother. My life is in a void, and I don't know who to turn to. In the years following Madiba's death, Kathrada became increasingly critical of the government of the day, meeting with and showing support for the student fees must fall movement. When I look at my own record, I can't believe it. I said the wildest things you can imagine. But that's what young people do. So Madiba was also young. He also broke up meetings. He also pulled people off the platform in his youth. But young people will do that. And uh, we can't hide it. It's, it's part of history. We have all, all gone through it and we have survived. And we've learned our lessons. He also called on President Jacob Zuma to resign in the wake of a damning constitutional court judgment on Inkandla. In the last year of his life, he also joined the ANC 101 group, pushing for the ANC's rebirth and renewal. Making a clear statement, he also joined the Save South Africa movement and he condemned the charging of Finance Minister Previn Gordon with fraud, saying it was a vindictive political move. It's a pity that he is being targeted by known and unknown characters. Some of them who are coming, a journey come lately. They've never seen the struggle. I don't know where they come from. Suddenly their names are in the pictures because they got something negative to say about Praveen. And those are opportunists. Uncle Kathy lived his life fighting for a better South Africa. He will be remembered not only as a giant of the struggle, but as a man who lived by his principles to the end. By all means, enjoy the fruits of freedom. Don't ever forget the responsibility. Nikolaus Bauer, Johannesburg.